I got suspended on Pinterest and I don't know what to do about it. This is where all of my traffic comes from. I need my account back. I didn't do anything wrong. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this and chances are they are doing something wrong. The creators that get their account banned or marked as spam, most of the time it's because they are doing some of the things I'm gonna mention in this video. Now, I'm not saying that that's a blanket thing for all creators that get marked as spam. Sometimes it's literally a bot marking you as spam and then now you have to go through the channels and get in touch with an actual person at Pinterest to get your account unlocked. If that's you and you are genuinely a creator that is looking on how to get your account un unmarked as spam or how to avoid getting marked as spam, then stick around because this video is for you and I'm gonna lay it out all of the top things as a Pinterest agency at managing hundreds of Pinterest accounts that we see on a routine basis. Welcome, I am Heather Ferris. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, hello, I'm a Pinterest marketing person. I don't wanna call myself an expert. However, I have been doing this for business for over four years and I've been using Pinterest for 10 years. So I'm excited that you're here. Please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more Pinterest marketing tips as well as systems and workflows and marketing tips in general on how to grow your business online. So, Today we're talking about how to get yourself unmarked or how to avoid getting marked as spam on Pinterest. So chances are either you are trying to avoid it, like I just said, I'm just repeating myself, or you have your, you've gotten yourself marked as spam. Now, the number one reason most people get marked as spam on Pinterest at least not in the United States, but overseas, is you're playing the follow unfollow game. Pinterest does not do follow unfollow. Most people don't even realize that they're gaining followers and it's actually kind of hard to find your follower count unless you know where to look. If you're overseas and you're watching this video, you're not in the United States and you are playing the follow unfollow game, stop. That's ch chances are that's why your account is now marked as spam. Pinterest followers don't matter. Pinterest monthly reach does not matter. Okay, so don't play that. The second reason why you may have gotten marked as spam in the first place is pinning restricted content. Pinterest does not allow misinformation in the, in the health field. Meaning, if you are pinning things that are promising weight loss results, promising massive before and after results in fitness, in mental health, in uh, any sort of health in the body, they are not going to allow that to happen. I actually had a client where we were attempting to run ads to a weight loss coffee, even though they were not promising results, and our ads kept getting shut off. It was after much back and forth with my Pinterest ad rep that we found out that because the box itself said weight loss coffee, that is the exact reason why the ad kept getting turned off. And we couldn't use that account to promote that product. The account itself didn't get marked as spam, but you cannot even promote products that promise any sort of health information, befores and afters, anything like that on Pinterest. They don't allow it. They do not want to be the spread of misinformation, okay? They wanna protect their users. Second, you're pinning nudity, sexual content, political content, hateful things. Not allowed. You could get marked as spam. Your account could even get shut down for any of those things. Anything gambling, firearms, tobacco, anything like that will get shut off. Do not create pins for those if you are in those industries. Pinterest is probably not the place for you. Now, with that being said, let's go on to the next reason. People are reporting you as spam on Pinterest. If you, and this goes into the fourth reason why you could possibly be getting reported as spam on Pinterest, and that's pinning repetitively. 
If you are pinning repetitively and someone keeps seeing your content over and over and it gets on their nerves or they're just sick of seeing it and they mark it as, you know, irrelevant to them or as spam, then the spam filters will kick in, the bots will start doing some research on your account, and you could possibly get marked as spam for that reason, because other people are marking you as spam. I actually had a content creator come to me and ask me to help them get unblocked for this exact reason, because their competitor was marking their content on Pinterest as spam in order to further their own business. Don't do this if you're a content creator. Don't mark your competitors as spam. It's a cheap trick. It just gets on my nerves. Don't do that. But this could be a reason why you're getting marked as spam on Pinterest. Then fourth and lastly is the whole process of pinning your content repetitively. If you're pinning pins multiple times a day to your boards, stop. Okay? Pinterest has alluded to the fact and Tailwind has come out and said, you don't need to pin the same pin to multiple boards every single day in order to get ahead. Like you're trying to game the system and it's not going to work. You need to prioritize your Pinterest strategy around the things that we know are going to work based on what Pinterest and Tailwind have come out together collabor collaboratively. I can't talk. And said that that's what they want you to do, right? Okay, so stop pinning your content repetitively. Do not add your pins to Tailwind and add 10 boards and have them go out once an hour. Don't do that, okay? Once per day, like one pin per day for a week at a minimum. I would even go as far, if you pin a ton of content, like if you have a lot of content in your queue, I would even go as far as like once every couple days. So part of this video is to actually show you inside of Tailwind and to explain the new features that came out in February. I'm a little behind the curve here, but that's okay. So in February, Tailwind came out and basically Tailwind and Pinterest have like started saying some things. Now Pinterest can't come out and say only pin this many things a day, only do this, only do that, because that would give spammers the ability to actually um, game their algorithm and they're not going to do that. So in collaboration with Tailwind, they have come out and said, do not pin more than 50 pins per day. Um, do not pin repetitively and basically stay within these guidelines and we will distribute your content. As part of today's video, I'm going to take you inside of Tailwind and I'm going to show you the smart guide and the spam guard filters that you can use as part of your pinning strategy to stay within their guidelines to make sure you're not doing number four, which is pinning repetitively. Okay, so let's go inside the computer and I will show you what's up. So this is my travel blogs Tailwind account and I already have this set up and optimized for, uh, you know, making sure I'm not pinning repetitively or just outright spamming anything. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when you're inside Tailwind is to go to your schedule if you haven't already. In the schedule is where you're going to find the little safeguard, spam guard, smart guide thing, right? So I already have my schedule set to 15 pins per day. It says your pinning frequency is in line with current best practices. That is what you want. You want this to be green and with a little heart on it. Now, if I show you what happens when you go over 51, the spam guard warning comes up and says, to maintain healthy pinning habits, we recommend adjusting time slots to your schedule to a safer range, less than 50 pins per day. This is what you wanna pay attention to. As a guide, most of our successful pinners publish close to 15 to 25 pins per day on average. Learn more. If you click learn more, you're gonna to come to this article. It's basically going to break down what Smart Guide and spark, uh, Safeguard, the spam thing, is going to do for you. So it's it's going going to tell you if your pinning habits are healthy. When this first rolled out, it was telling you whether or not you were in line with current pinning best practices. It basically monitored your pinning habits, and it would tell you if you were jacking things up. Okay, so... This is the first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for to make sure you're within their guidelines, is this all clear button. Now, 
Another thing that you're going to want to look for when you are pinning items is in your schedule when you're adding things to your queue. If you add more than 10 boards to your pin, it's going to tell you that you are, look, it says you've already pinned this to more than one board. This is going to turn like an orangey color. Just keep watching. There it goes. So it says more than 10 boards selected. Heads up, when pinning to multiple boards, Pinterest best practices re recommends choosing only the most relevant boards for your content. Avoid more than 10. Pinning to the same pen, uh, pinning the same pen to too many boards can reduce its effectiveness and re reduce the potential reach. Essentially telling you that if you are spamming your pen to multiple boards, your dropping your distribution rate drastically. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that what I would suggest within my Pinterest course, Pin Profit Plan, is to schedule this to your most relevant boards in week one and then come back during week two, put it back into your schedule, and then you're staying within those guidelines. I've actually been recommending that far before you ever saw Spam Guard and Safeguard come out. So just pay attention to that. Those are the two things you're going to look for within your Tailwind dashboard just to ensure that you're pinning effectively. And okay, so you just saw inside of Tailwind, you saw the spam guard, the safeguard, smart guide thing. I'm calling it all the wrong things. It's fine. I've had way too much caffeine today and I'm massively pinging. But the things that you're going to want to focus on are... Staying within that 15 to 25 pin range. I think that's perfectly healthy. For four years, all of my clients haven't pinned more than 30 pins per day, with the exception of a couple food bloggers because they have massive amounts of content. Uh, just stick within that 15 to 25 per day pin range and you don't need to pin other people's content if you don't feel comfortable doing so. Just a quick tidbit. Um, Next, you're going to want to make sure that you are creating fresh pins consistently. So what does that mean? If you need to, if you want to know more about fresh pins, somewhere up in one of the corners, I will link my video WTF fresh pins, what the F are fresh pins, uh, where I explain the whole process and concept of fresh pins. And I, I kind of go more in depth about that. So check that video out if you haven't done that, but focus on creating fresh pins or fresh content or brand new content. Only follow. If you're following people, don't mass follow people and only follow people that are relevant to you and your content and what you want to see. If you're a business on Pinterest, you don't even need to follow people. It's like not necessary at all. So, I mean, unless it's just another blogger or content creator that you really like and you want to see them in your smart feed or your following feed, then yeah, go ahead and follow them. Do not... Okay, bullhorn, do not pin restricted content. If you are an essential oil blogger, a weight loss blogger, a fitness blogger, like influencer, if you are in any of those niches where you deal with health and wellness, do not make promises that you cannot hold up by like the FDA, okay? They're not gonna allow it. The whole weight loss coffee example is a great one. Um, if you're pinning content that's making promises, they're going to have a problem with it. So maybe just avoid that. And then lastly, just don't pin too much of the same thing in the same day. Even if you're manually pinning, which I do have a video coming up on manual pinning, but even if you're manual pinning, don't pin the same pin to too many boards in one day. Maybe spread them out if you're going to do that and just stick to your schedule. Use Pinterest as a user too. You can go on the platform and pin things that are relevant to growing your business or whatever, relevant to your audience. Pin them manually if you want, like use the platform as you would a consumer. Just don't pin your pins too many times in a day. That's it. Um, we have talked all about the things you need to avoid that you may be doing. And we talked about Tailwind's safe guard, spam, smart guide thing. It's too many S's in there. And 
like all about not getting sent to spam on Pinterest in this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button so you know when new videos are released, which is every week, generally, unless I just fall off the map again. Um, and, you know, leave me a comment. If you want to learn something else about Pinterest or growing your blog using Pinterest, definitely leave me a comment and let me know what you want to learn. I'm always keeping up with those and I actually respond. So, check it out. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week.